Bible. Uh, 2012 and Earth Annihilated are New Cross, which means that there's you know supposed to be a a connection between that or significance. But um, I I sort of am sad that I included that in the first book because I I feel it's far fetched and uh, I I I I think it's it's wrong to impute uh, any say that the Bible or the Quran or for that matter even Nostradamus ever said anything specifically about 2012. It's, 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 that's that's an overstatement. Well, and in that case, then, there's obviously no reference about Jesus in 2012. No, no, although it, whenever he decides to return, it would be great to see him. Next up, we go to Williamsburg, Virginia. John on Coast to Coast. Hey, John, go ahead. Hey, gentlemen. Hey, uh, as far as the number 666, I... I had always thought that that was the Antichrist, the first beast in Revelation, and 13.1, I believe, is the um, chapter, and uh, with the with the seven heads and ten horns and all that. Right. And, and then uh, the movies too. I kind of you know you kind of get that idea from the horror movies, kind of like uh, is that the, the number to, of the Antichrist, I guess. But then uh, I, I had a, some kind of a Bible commentary book or something. And it predicted there that that it was probably the second beast whose number is six six six, not the actual antichrist. So the second beast that comes up is supposed to be some kind of a it has two horns or something, and he's supposed to support the first beast um, and make an image of have people or whatever worship an image of the first beast. And and that person is supposed to uh, name is supposed to add up to six 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 in numbers. And from what I ever understood, that meant you go back to the old Jewish um, Hebrew uh, or, or, or letters of the, of the uh, that they use for numbers, and you just translate the letters into uh, what the number count, what the symbol of the number was, and add them up, and the person's name will add up to 666 as far as the total there. Hmm. I just wondered if you knew anything more about that than, than that, because that's... Um, I did some, did some looking one time on that stuff, and it was like I got about that far, but that's about it. Uh, I, I, I find it confusing, and I, I, I don't think I have much to add. I, I had always thought it was the the second beast as well, but uh, uh, I, I kind of got lost with that. I I remember um, when Ronald Wilson Reagan um was six letters, six letters, six letters, and and some people therefore in, in, in decided that he was the antichrist, and he, he didn't seem like too much of an antichrist no. to me. Keith, uh, by the way, a text message in from Keith in Virginia: Are we in the beginning or the end stages of this Earth age? What do you think? Of this Earth age, um, and I would guess he means the apocalypse. I well, I would I would defer to Abbot Antipas, who says that we're at the beginning of the end stage. Um, but that, I think, directly relates to human civilization and kind of ignores uh, the evolutionary possibilities of, uh, of going beyond our species to something that's uh, you know, derived from us, but through mutation and, and probably through intentional engineering. What's the old saying? Is this the end of the beginning or the beginning of the end? Yeah, it's both. Um, I think it was Admiral Rickover who said, oh, don't worry, if there's a nuclear war, a, a new and wiser species will evolve. I think it's a bit cavalier. But um, but it, it it does seem that most of our, our, our ancient wisdom refers specifically to human civilization. And I'm not sure that we're, we're that far from an evolutionary leap, um, either through some combination with machines or otherwise, away from civilization being dominated by human beings per se. Are you going to make any predictions on uh, when you uh, think this really will hit us? Um, I, I think it's going to be a palm slap to the forehead, uh, us realizing that we've, <laughs> it's already begun. And it'll be too late. Yes. It could uh, be too late. Yeah, uh, uh, unless we... Unless... <laughs> I'm sorry, but unless we, we get the Senate to agree with the House and protect our power grid so we have something to plug in. I See, I think within a couple of years, that kind of an X flare is going to hit us. Yeah, I do too. I don't know why, but that uh, that's what I feel. Yep. We're going to come back in just a moment, Lawrence. We'll take final phone calls with you. Lawrence's website, lawrencejoseph.com, linked up at coasttocoastam.com right now. You can send him an email right there. And we're talking about his book that just came out called Aftermath. And basically, it's teaching you how to prepare 
how to survive, how to get ready after the apocalypse of 2012. We'll be back in a moment. We'll take final phone calls on Coast to Coast AM. Well, our next Coast to Coast program, it's Who's Behind the Secret Door? Four special guests. I have no idea who they are. When we come back, let's take final phone calls with Lawrence Joseph, Aftermath, on Coast to Coast AM. So, Lawrence, what are you going to do personally as we get close to this date, this ominous moment? What are you going to do? Well, i am I'm already begun to work on the family emergency plan and making preparations. Um, I also... Um, I'm a religious person. Uh, I, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to make noise um, for the things that I that we can fix. I'm, I, I'm I'm nigh onto obsessed with saving this power grid from being blown out. And um, like I said, there's certain things you can do something about, and other things you don't worry about. So, you know, uh, I'm not going to spend my time fretting over. Earthquakes or volcanoes, because I can't do anything about them. I, um, they happen, they happen. Yeah. And we're all in it together, as I've always said. Amen. So we do it. But uh, you you are very really Maronite or Roman Catholic? Well, I was baptized Maronite, raised Episcopalian, married Roman Catholic, but now I'm divorced, so I guess I'm out of it. <laughs> There's a great Maronite church in St. Louis. Really? Where, where on Wednesdays, the ladies of this church put on the greatest lunch you'll ever have. And, I mean, the place is huge. Everybody from the city goes, the mayor goes, everybody goes. Oh, I'd love to do that. Uh, to the phones we go. The last time, Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, Hugh's up there. Go ahead, Hugh. Yes, I'm a Christian, too, and I'll be uh, praying. Good show tonight, Mr. Joseph. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> do you think that uh, Jesus Christ and the Antichrist can appear on the earth at the same time? And also, monetarily, I notice the United States is flooding the... Uh, the world market with dollars, which we're just printing, of course, we're no longer, uh, there's no longer an element of gold. There's going to be an abundance of gold on the, on the global market in the years to come because of new mining technologies. I notice all these currencies that are failing uh, lack gold content, but uh, many hundreds of nations would like their gold content returned to the paper currency. Mm-hmm. Now, about the European uh, Union, um, uh, everybody is concerned about the euro dollar. Now, that is a reserve currency. The United States is the central uh, monetary system. And uh, do you think it's possible? Because I'm looking at gold prices. Gold prices are like $1,200 average. And um, uh, if uh, if you uh, take on the Mexican peso, it's already at $1,500. And we had that great crash in 1987 under Ronald Reagan. Now, the dollar should normally be less than 33 cents, but it's doing quite well. It's around 84 cents. Um, These things do not add up, uh, uh, Mr. Joseph. Uh, Do you have any comment on it? Thank you. Okay. Let me see if I can take that apart. First thing, uh, I'm I'm sure that if Jesus so willed himself to be here when the Antichrist was on earth, that uh, so be it. So be it, and and he would would prevail. as for the the gold prices, I, I I claim no expertise other than noting that the last time I was on on this show, um, in 2007, um, George was advising us to purchase gold, and if I had done mm-hmm. so, I'd be significantly uh, better off than I am now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, the idea of of advanced mining technologies making more gold available is something I hadn't considered. I, I uh, you know, you always hear about you know the, 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 the in Medicine Hat Canada, uh, there's there's this they claim that there's going to be a lot of gold found there or something like that, and it didn't pan out. But um, increasing the supply would certainly um, diminish prices. As for uh, currencies that seem to be primarily related to other currencies. It's it's, it's a relativistic universe in, in there, and uh, I didn't quite follow your analyses of how the dollar is 84 cents and all, but that's probably because I lack the expertise, so uh, let me end there. Well, uh, we talked a little bit about the Yellowstone caldera, Lawrence, and uh, you know, to me, if that thing goes and it's overdue, they say, Yes. I mean, my gosh, what a problem we would have. Yes. Do you think this is tied into this entire 2012 apocalypse? 
I certainly hope not, um, because I, I don't know if you saw the, the rather silly 